Hey, that's pretty good. Welcome to Raccoon City. Today we're talking about a juggernaut of a game that has lived on to multiple consoles and single-handedly revived survival horror during one of its all-time low points. The original Resident Evil was released in 1996 on the PlayStation and was based off of the NES title Sweet Home. Instead of making a ground-up remake at that time, the team struck inspiration and transformed it into a 3D survival horror game inspired mainly by Alone in the Dark and zombie horror films, such as Dawn of the Dead and the George Romero movies. The success of the game has brought on many different sequels, side games, and even three different film franchises. Some great, some bad, and some are Resident Evil Gaiden. I mean, seriously, that game is complete shit. Rarely in the video game industry does a company get multiple back-to-back -back successes. To name a few, Bethesda, Rockstar, Square Enix, and Capcom. During the early 2000s, survival horror had become stale, with Resident Evil 4, Dead Space, and Bioshock just over the horizon. Capcom had struck a deal with Nintendo and released a remake of the 1996 classic, Resident Evil, taking that game as an outline and improving on it in every single way, blending horror and mystery to make something brilliant. Upon release, Resident Evil would be a slow burn because Nintendo GameCube wasn't very popular compared to the PS2 and Xbox. But the game was critically acclaimed and collected a dedicated fan and player base. People were amazed by the amount of growth between Code Veronica and Resident Evil Remake. And most rightfully so. This game took everything we love about Resident Evil and perfected it. We all know the story of this classic. A team of special officers known as STARS goes to investigate the disappearance of the other half of their team, who were sent to investigate bizarre disappearances in the Arclay Mountains. Seriously, big question I have. How many teams can you fucking spare to search for each other? Seems kind of fishy. Anyways, Alpha Team discovers Bravo Team's downed helicopter and they land, only to be attacked by mutated, bloodthirsty dogs. The surviving members escape to a nearby, definitely not a creepy or sus mansion. Depending on your player choice, you either control Jill, who is a young, strong female with exceptional lock-picking skills. She knows her way around a lock. <laughs> she, may, she also may or may not be a sandwich. Or you can play as Chris, a promising young man with leadership and combat skills. And he has a vendetta against boulders. As you tread through the dark halls of the mansion, you are stalked by different creatures such as the aforementioned mutated dogs from outside, angry ass dickhead crows, and something that looks like the big snake from Final Fantasy VII, the Sephiroth Skewered. And, finally, big mutated lizards that are incredibly fast and will cut your head off with one swipe. They're known as Hunters. Similar to the original, Remake was directed by Shinji Mikami, who would later go on to direct Resident Evil 4 just three years later. The gameplay is similar to the previous titles, revolving around the tank control system and featuring item management as your pause screen allowing you to examine items you pick up. Combine items such as medicinal herbs together to do different things, healing-wise to your character. Green herbs will heal your character, red herbs will increase the amount of health you recover, Fuck! and blue herbs Fuck! will remove poison. God, fuck! There are multiple ways you can get poisoned in this game, like getting bit by a spider, getting spit on by a fucking <laughs> plant. <laughs> the game features an assortment of weapons such as knives, multiple handguns, a couple shotguns, a grenade launcher, a magnum, and if you can complete the game under three hours, you can unlock an infinite rocket launcher, or a, as we call it, a rocket launder, which will allow you to literally one-shot anything like it's Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z. 
That's a good way to relieve the stress from beating this game on hard mode. Trust me, hard mode will pound your cheeks like Diddy pounded Meek Mill. <laughs> The game features an assortment of puzzles, mainly helping you unlock areas you need to access to further the oh story my God, or get oh, life Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? How did this get your ass on, man? Death masks. There are morbid sculpts, each missing a different section of the face. For example, one's missing its mouth, one's missing its nose, one's missing its eyes, and one is missing all three. When all four are collected, you place them on the bus and are greeted with a boss fight with the Crimson King zombie. He can be a pain if you don't know how to take him down. My first experience with Remake was around 2013. I had played a few Resident Evil games before this and was already in love with the series. Previously stated, Resident Evil 4 is my favorite game of all time. So I had high expectations when I played this game. Immediately I was blown away by the graphics and the creepy dreadful tone, the game and accompanying score set for the audience. I was addicted and made my way through multiple times, struggling to complete puzzles without internet or any friends that had played the game could, that could give me hints. I would go to school and Google the puzzle solutions, get home and get just a little bit further in the game. Those were simpler times. Now you can literally Google whatever the fuck you want and it's right there. Like for example, you could look up anal tentacle hentai and uh, sit and jerk off to that for hours. <laughs> After years of playing, I can speed run the game with moderate practice. Usually I need to warm up if I haven't played it uh, for a while. I have achieved the Platinum Trophy and own the game on three different consoles. My Skintendo Switch, a PS4 copy that I, that I play on the 5, and I also own the original CIB GameCube release. The big twist at the end of the game, spoiler alert by the way, go play this if you haven't, and come back after you're done. Captain Wesker is a big wig for the Umbrella Corporation and has had a big hand in all of this. Single-handedly using his bio-organic weapons to take out the STARS team and get them out of his way. He also murders Enrico in cold blood and blackmails Barry to assist him in his evil task by threatening to kill his wife and young daughters. So really, Barry had no choice but to help Wesker. Once he admits his plan and comes clean to Chris and Jill, he activates the big bad thick daddy Ivan Moody looking bitch ass boy tyrant. And the tyrant turns on and supposedly kills him. Then the tyrant sets his sight on your character. And most of the time, if you were smart, you have an arsenal of magnum bullets saved at this point and can dunk this motherfucker in like shit six shots and make him feel like Tupac. Which is kind of funny, because he survives and comes back to greet you on the helipad, depending on what choices you made in the game. But still, you were gifted with a rocket launcher, and you light this ass up like me after I eat Taco Bell. The game ends with the survivors flying away in the distance, granted with a moment of rest for now. The story behind the Trevor family is a truly heartbreaking addition to this game. They were the original owners and builders of the mansion and resided there for many years. When Oswell Spencer and the rest of Umbrella moved their operations nearby, the family was deeply affected. George Trevor built many of the hidden rooms and gimmicky traps during the construction of the great mansion. Later him and his wife, Jessica, would give birth to a daughter, Lisa, during the 1950s. After his wife and daughter were experimented on, George would return and meet his demise due to starvation and dehydration in the secret pit that he was hiding in. The only one left was Lisa, the daughter, and she was already mutating due to the experiments that she was subject to by the Umbrella Corporation, losing nearly all motor function and her body growing to become hideous and disfigured. She would roam the property for many years to come, 
still searching for her mother and father. Upon the remaining STARS members' return to Raccoon City, they attempted to convince everyone of the truth behind Umbrella and its lies, but nobody believed them. The remaining members seemed to go their separate ways, Chris going to Europe to further investigate Umbrella, leading to Code Veronica, Jill and Brad staying in Raccoon City, leading to Resident Evil 2 and 3. I'm not exactly sure what happened to Rebecca or Barry, but Rebecca is seen later on to be a doctor, so I'm assuming she went to college to get her PhD and, well, learn to give people uh, prostate exams. But later in September, the Raccoon City outbreak happens, and that leads us to Resident Evil 2 and 3, like I stated earlier. Thank you all for watching and staying through the video if you have made it this far. If not, I don't fucking blame you. I mean, we literally listened to Mick Mill getting pounded by P. Diddy. Oh, I've spent a while trying to get my videos up to this level of work. I'm feeling pretty satisfied so far. Join me next time when I will discuss either the Resident Evil 3 remake or the Resident Evil 4 remake. Please go play this game if you haven't yet, and perhaps you will realize why it is so fucking great.